Welcome to Forest New Life Church and our weekly devotions. My name is Avril and for the next few minutes I will be talking to you about the book of Romans. Today is part two of our talk as last week I introduced to us the theme of the book of Romans and the overarching theme is the gospel, the good news. And this is what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. And that was a challenge that I brought to us. Are we ashamed of the gospel, the good news? But also I gave us a second challenge, and that was to read a chapter every day. And if you did, that means you will be at chapter 8. So I'm going to read to us all of chapter 8 from the NIV. Life through the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death, because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received through uh, brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children, now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth complaining, uh, comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been grown in, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly, as we await eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they've already seen? But if we hope for what we do not ha yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. 
And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things that God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up free for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one, Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who has raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Wow, there was a lot uh, to think about in that chapter. And in fact, there is so much for us to digest and look at. We haven't got time to do that in the next few minutes that I have left. But what I will encourage you to do is to look at it yourself. And also, Tom Wright has written a book, Paul, for everyone. And so if you want to find out more, read. Go and look it up yourself. He's written pages and pages on chapter 8. But what I want to do just for the next few minutes is just focus on one passage. And that is more than conquerors. You know, there's a verse here in uh, verse um, 11, no, 31, sorry. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, Paul wrote that we will face troubles. And as Christians, you may feel that actually you have faced troubles here in the West. And there's a list that Paul wrote that as Christians, you know, we can um, expect to face trouble and hardship. We can expect to face persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. Because as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. But here in the West, we may not actually encounter that kind of persecution. But I'm aware that open doors um, can help us to understand what persecution is around the world faced by our brothers and sisters. And at the moment, I don't know if you've seen on the news, but in a country called Maynanar, if I'm correct, there is great persecution because there's been a coup that has been taken by the military. And this has jeopardized the safety of the Christians in that country. So I'm just going to read to you about this country, May and Na, so that we understand the persecution that they face. In that country, there is a 54.8 million population. 4.4 of that population is Christians. But within that country, Buddhist nationalism is especially strong and that is the driving force behind the christians of persecution but how do they persecute them you know what they do is that they refuse to um, give them food so when there's a famine they don't get the food when they're now like they're through the covid they are being refused the injections you see they face that persecution day in day out for their faith and I just want us to pray for that country. But actually, you may be thinking, I don't know how to pray for my brothers and sisters around the world. You know, I have no understanding. 
but actually it tells us in the scriptures how to pray. And I'm just going to read a verse to us from Ephesians chapter 6. And this is what Paul wrote. He said, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Also pray for me that whenever I speak, words may be given so that I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fierce, fearlessly as I should. You know, and that is the overarching theme, isn't it, in Romans, to be unashamed of the gospel. And for that, Paul, he knew what it was to be persecuted. You know, this was a, an apostle who, who lived by, his, by the word. He lived by his convictions. And that's a challenge to each and every one of us today. So we're just going to pray. So just whatever you're doing, I just ask that you just pause and that we just invite the Holy Spirit to come in and to speak to us. And what is it the Holy Spirit is putting in your heart to pray for that people? And that's what I want you to pray, just where you are. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come and fill our hearts and our minds. And just as we're thinking about this country, Myanmar today, and the persecution that our brothers and sisters are facing at this time, Father, I ask that you put your protection around them. Father, and just as Paul talks about being fearless for the gospel, Father, we know that our brothers and sisters in these countries and many other countries are being fearless for the gospel and are paying for it with their life. So, Father, we ask for more of your boldness, Father, that we will be unashamed to share your gospel. In the name of Jesus, amen.